Hello, hello, hello. It is fall 2019. That means it's time for a new season of anime. I've watched 20, whatever, 20 episode ones of new anime this season. I'm going to talk about all of them here on this video. As usual, I'm not covering anything that is a second season, third season, fourth season. I figure if you're interested, you'll go back to the first season. And if you like the first season, you'll probably watch the second. Um, also, I'm not aiming at any shows that are clearly aimed at like a really, really young, like, kindergarten first grade crowd um because again that's just kind of not my target market and there are a few that i'm sure i missed um, there's always a few that i missed every every any given season but <coughs> hopefully this will be of interest to you so let's get started with africa no salaryman this is a goofy anime series about a, a lion a lizard and a bird who all work at a typical Japanese office um, and get into sort of wacky situations with each other. Think The Office, but with animals. Uh, very dry humor, very odd. Um, sort of like um, Pop Team Epic, if you will, although not as wild in terms of styles and so forth. One of those very oddball anime series. If you're into that, check it out. It's it, That's exactly what it is. Um, there's not appear to be any drama or complexity whatsoever. Uh, then there's After School Dice Club, uh, an anim anime series about a group of girls who play board games after school. Um, a little bit like the uh, the anime series from, I think it was last year, called um, A Sister's All You Need. This is an anime series about actual board games. Like, they go to a board game store and you see all of these, like, they're real board games out. It's, you know, there's Ticket to Ride in the corner, all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's kind of interesting seeing a, an anime series where kind of real life interconnects in that way. Um, cute characters, fun situation. Um, I, I am kind of interested in the relationship between the, the different characters and kind of the, you know, how the, the um, personalities bounce off each other. Um, but ultimately, it's, it's there for you know, cute girls playing board games. And it definitely is that. And it does do, get across those sorts of aspects of, um, of that kind of concept. So if the idea of cute girls playing board games appeals to you, that's what you'll get. Uh, then you have Hiru no Sora, uh, a basketball anime. And it is, it's, it's, it's a basketball anime. Um, worst team in the league. Young man shows up who is surprisingly talented and pulls the team together. And they have a shot at not, right? It's, it's the same plot as every sports anime ever. Um, but if you're into that, it is definitely that. And there's definitely a, you know, love of basketball in the show. Um, so good for what ails you in that sense. Uh, one of the cuter anime this season, Ascendance of a Bookworm. This is about a librarian bibliophile who um, passes away and finds herself in the body of a young girl um, in a medieval, slightly fantastic medieval environment. But it is... Like, low medieval. Like, nobody can read. Um, literacy is only for the, you know, very well off. Nobody can afford a book. So she is just horrified that she can't find anything to read. And so it kind of, you know, looks at her life as she's trying to figure out what, what to do. Um, she's in the body of a five-year-old girl who is physically kind of weak. So very interesting looking at a pretty grounded medieval world. Like, this is not... Um, typical D and D fantasy world where it's like, okay, we kind of have these things. Um, you know, we're kind of throwing together a lot of tropes. It feels like folks have you know really are aware of like so when they sit down to eat dinner, they eat stew almost all the time, right? Uh, you know, it, it's not you know giant ham hocks for the peasants every day. So really interesting in, in that um, in that way, and it, it's not like actual medieval Europe or anything. But I really like it. Again, the main character is adorable and do a good job of kind of balancing all these aspects of that story. Um, cute because it's isekai, but it's not like isekai in the sense of I'm going to save the world, right? It's this interesting sort of uh, scenario to be in. And this really neat goal of trying to make books and inspire the love of reading in a society that just has no need for that, frankly, yet. Um, Assassin's Pride kind of caught me off guard. It is about a... Um, Bishonen young man who is uh, assigned as the bodyguard slash protector slash whatever of a teenage girl um, and the teenage girl has um, let's just say problems 
which um, makes things complicated for the uh, the hero. And if I'm being vague, it's because there's actually a lot revealed in episode one that I I don't want to spoil because it's kind of fun seeing how these things evolve. Um, and a lot of the sort of a lot of the interesting elements of this, I think, come from seeing this sort of base storyline and then seeing how how they twist it. I really like the fact that this is a show that creates this very interesting dilemma for the protagonist that he has it looks like he's going to have to balance for a while. Um, so I found that interesting. There, and in case this sounds like very generic, to be clear, there was very little comedy in this first episode. It was pretty much all melodrama um, of characters, you know, with struggling with multiple desires which is one of the definitions of a multidimensional character. So that's, I think, what appealed to me, that this feels like it's really trying to set up conflict in which characters are pulled in multiple directions. So we'll see where it goes, but like I said, it was, it was kind of interesting. Very good action animation, too. Like, high-quality, high-budget action animation in Assassin's Pride. So always nice to see, and something that does kind of... Yeah, it interests me and uh, you know caught my attention. Also catching my attention for other reasons, Azure Lane. This is a a genre that I'll be honest, I just don't get. Um, it's Kantai Collection. It's kind of Strike Witches. Um, beautiful girls who <sighs> battleships transform into their weaponry. So these girls like fly through the air, a battleship will disassemble and reassemble on them as like a set of cannons, which they then fire. It's based on a mobile game, to give you an idea. Um, the, the girls are pretty. There is a surprisingly high animation budget, at least in episode one. Um, it is clearly a, a version of World War II in terms of the various... Uh, factions involved, it's, not, it's clearly not, like, it's not our World War II, but it's versions of World War II, um, which is kind of interesting. It, it, it's a Chinese mobile game, which makes sense because the Japanese side is the villains in this, which is really odd to see in anime. Um, and it's made by, by a Japanese studio, but it's kind of remarkable. Anyway, um, so you have Azure Lane, it is, it's Kankole. Like, it's, it's, it is it's that. If you want that, that is what this is. And you're going to get precisely that. Um, beautiful girls with lots of weapons shooting at each other. Uh, <laughs> and it's just one of those things where I'm like, this is goofy. This is really goofy. Um, but there's lots of weird, goofy stuff that I like. Um, surprisingly not goofy, Beastars. Um, this is a CGI anime from Studio Orange, who also made Land of the Lustrous a couple years ago. Uh, which, if you've seen that, you know what you're in for. When I say all CGI, Studio Orange is really trying to take what anime has learned about um, storyboarding and character and how to get things across in the visual medium and apply that in CGI. Um, it is set in, an, in a world of anthropomorphic animals, um, but it is a psychological horror story. Um, very, you know, very basically, it is... Zootopia as the Halloween franchise. Um, a carnivore is has started to to attack and kill um, the herbivores in this school, basically. So one of their own, one of the other students, that also happens to be a carnivore, is apparently going after somebody. Nobody knows who it is. Um, it's very atmospheric, um, interesting use of, of color. It deals with these aspects of sort of um, animal instincts but interestingly maps that onto differences between people um, and these questions of you know, what, what makes each of us unique and distinct. Really interesting story, um, definitely done in a distinctive style in, no, uh, in, in every, every uh, possible sense. This kind of stuff is right down my alley. Um, if you like Lane, if you like uh, Boogie Pop Phantom, those sorts of things, that's what you're getting here. <coughs> Try to get a refocus there. Um, but obviously, not for everyone. This is, that, that's some dark stuff. Uh, not so dark is Cautious Hero. This is an anime series, another Isekai series, in which a beautiful goddess summons an Earth teenager to um, save a world. 
To give you an idea of the tone of this series, when she goes to summon the the boy, she says to her, she she, she narrates basically. Um, um, I took the normal step of summoning a Japanese teenage boy because their pop media seems to be full of stories of Japanese boys ending up in other worlds. So when they show up, actually show up in another world, they get used to it more quickly. So very self-aware, definitely a comedy, having a lot of fun because the main character um, is not just... Um, uh, he, does not, 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 he does not just turn out to be a cautious character, excuse me, or a, a powerful character. He's absurdly cautious about everything. He, you know, he will not step into something unless he has plan upon plan upon plan. He's the kind of guy who, if he plays Pokemon, he's going to level up his Pokemon to like level 30 before he hits the first gym. Right? He's that kind of a person, while the goddess just wants him to frankly get on with it. So, you know, fun interactions there, very goofy, very um, light, and something that I found a lot of fun. I laughed out loud multiple times while watching it, so it's, it's one of those things. Um, and so, and again, it, it's nice seeing isekai series that play around with the tropes instead of just being straight isekai. So, interesting to see where that goes. Then there's Days of Urashima Sakatasen. Yeah, uh, which is about cute boys in high school. They're, they're SD boys in high school, hanging out. I, I don't know what else to say. I, I really don't. That is, that is what it is. Um, I, I, I wish there was more that I could explain, frankly, but that's just, just that's, that's what it is, you know? Um... Anyway, uh, moving on to Didn't I Say to Make My Abilities Average in the Next Life. This is an anime series about a uh, girl who is isekai'd um, and discovers that she asks for a completely average life in the next world. And um, unfortunately, when she asks for an average, she gets a world average. So her, her abilities are average um, compared to Whatever creature is the worst at it, whatever creature is the best at it. So she is way better than most humans at almost everything. Um, but she just wants a normal life, just wants to fit in. So it's this actually kind of interesting interplay on that very stereotypical Japanese desire to just be average, just have a normal average life, with the fact that she just can't be, um, and dealing with that. Also surprising because um, not only does the first episode play around with, with isekai tropes and, and make fun of them, there's some like surprising like straight up parody aspects. Um, there's a scene in episode two where um, suddenly she starts um, looking like Dragon Ball Z characters when she gets very excited about fighting. Um, and then there are references to the original Jackie Chan Drunken Master movie, like not Legend of Drunken Master, which was technically Drunken Master two, the original like 1970s Drunken Master movie that kind of made Jackie Chan's career. <clears throat> that's that's some deep cuts, man. So, very curious to see where that one goes and how, how deep it goes into that, uh, that rabbit hole of references. Kind of interesting. Another comedic one, uh, Kimono Michi Rise Up, um, about a pro wrestler who is transported to a fantasy world because they want a, a strong person. Um, unfortunately, they discover that he is a um, huge fan of animals. Um, like, he wants to uh, retire from professional wrestling to take care of animals all the time. And this particular fantasy world is full of um, various furries. Uh, not just furries, but also, I forget the term before, but people with, like, you know, cat ears or, you know, rabbit ears or whatever. And so he is suddenly hugely enamored by all sorts of people in the world. Uh, and he's kind of an idiot. So, you know, he's constantly running around trying to pet the various inhabitants of this world um, and just causing all sorts of ruckus. Um, as a result of that. There is some uh, very over-the-top fan service in the first episode that kind of turned me off a little bit. Um, you know, I'm fine with fan service, but very in-your-face, which, uh, which is kind of odd. Um, like, they keep cutting back to it multiple times, so I felt weird. Um, but definitely a fun one, a cute one, and um, one of those things where, you know, there's some anime that you turn on just because you want to relax. I think it's going to be one of them. High school prodigies have it easy, even in another world. 
this one oddly starts with an absolutely absurd premise. So the seven high schoolers you see here are all literally the best in the world at what they do. That is the best surgeon in the world. It is the, um, the best ninja in the world, the best inventor in the world. And the silver-haired guy in the middle is not only good at politics, he, is, he, is, he was voted the prime minister of Japan while in high school again. They then get, they essentially crash land in a fantasy world, um, whereupon they start treating that with surprising um, realism, in the sense that they're in this fantasy world where there are, you know, there, there's, there's a nearby empire, and they have soldiers that come by on patrol, and there are monsters in the area and so forth, and immediately it's like, okay, what do we do with this village to make sure that we are kind of repaying them for keeping us here? And then how do we like solidify our position to make all that work? Also interesting for the fact that one of the things I really, really, really appreciate, they don't immediately all start arguing. They start working together immediately, at least these high schoolers. So it is about them as a team approaching these problems, even though they didn't, you know, they were aware of each other, they'd heard of each other, but they didn't, they didn't know each other you know, as, as friends before. And so seeing how they all decide to work on these problems is really fascinating. Um, also some wonderfully um, dry humor in it. Uh, the writing in this is, um, I, I, I don't like using the word better, but better than I've often seen in anime where you're, they're, they're clearly kind of thinking through how to um, get things across and how different characters speak and talk. Um, each character has kind of distinct mannerisms and so forth. Um, there's a great moment where one of where the um, the the best entrepreneur in the world um, goes off to market, and the prime minister is left behind with some of the people in the village, and the, the villagers are like, "I'm a little worried about how all that's going to go." And the prime minister says, "I wouldn't worry. That guy is capitalism and human clothes." Uh, <laughs> it's like that's that's cute. Like that's 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 funny. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm really looking to see where that goes. Um, because there's a, there's a plot. It's not just they're dropped in a world and they're kind of fighting monsters the whole time. No, it's clearly progressing. So, loving to see where that one goes. Uh, we'll see how uh, uh, what we get there. And speaking of that, No Guns Life is a cyberpunk noir series. Heavy on the noir. When I was growing up, my parents loved classic films. So when I was growing up, I watched a lot of movies in the 30s and the 40s, and so I was exposed to noir um, from a fairly early age. Now, I'm no huge expert, but I, you know, I'm not one of these guys who's like, I've heard of noir, I've maybe seen clips of noir things, but like my only real exposure to it is, I don't know, The Matrix, which is eh, eh, not really noir. Um, this is noir. This is that. Um, you know, noir is not just turning the palette down and having a character that smokes. Really cool there, and in case you're wondering, yes, the main character is a detective with a giant coat and whose head is a revolver. Um, it's set in this uh, near future of heavy cyborgization of people, and the main character is ex-military, had this revolver attached to his head. It's anime, it's kind of weird um, in terms of that premise, but it quickly becomes this dark... Um, noir story that's what it is um a lot of mystery um just really interesting and just visually very distinctive i love seeing anime that looks not like other anime not that typical anime looks bad but it's just fun to see something different and this definitely feels different it looks different um so i, I want to see where this goes some very dark stuff just in that first episode which is again something that you kind of need to do with with that kind of uh uh that kind of a tone that kind of a genre so Full marks on that. Again, it's first episode. Who knows where that's going to go on. But definitely an interesting one. Um, <laughs> now, to go the other direction. Null and Peta on Crunchyroll. This is a screwball comedy, up and down, about a young inventor girl who invents a um, this robot, this very fuzzy robot, 
to try to replace her older sister and basically puts the, not the soul, the tries to put the, the personality of her older sister in this robot <coughs> and succeeds on the personality part, but the robot is very, very buggy. Um, and so it will do things like she will go to hug it and suddenly giant spikes will burst out of its chest, which she has to evade very quickly. Um, so it's one of those sort of weird comedies. Nichi Joe very much uh, jumps to mind. Um, weird one, cute, light. Again, one of those things you're probably you're, you're just going to sit back, relax, and enjoy it, and that's fine. Um, but you're not, you know, I don't think you'll be very intellectually challenged by that one, but that's not what it's there for. Um, moving on to Oresuki, Are You the Only One Who Loves Me? A romantic comedy about a young man who is... Um, and I don't want to spoil too much about this. Um, he ends up involved in a um, um, a tangled web of romance. Um, but then once all of that is revealed, um, there are more revelations about kind of the exact personalities of people and what they want out of each other. Um, this feels like it rides that interesting line between... Um, odd coincidences, funny coincidences, right, of things happening that are coincidences for the sake of comedy uh, that work as that, uh, that kind of humor, um, or just, you know, just general, you know, high school romantic comedy stuff, but then also having a layer of seriousness, a layer of who are you really and what are you trying to get out of the situation, um, you know, a lot of high school romances, let's be honest, thrive on characters um, not being totally honest with each other. And it looks like this series might actually delve into that a little bit um, uh, stuff. So I'm curious. I, I want to see where this is go this goes. I'll be honest, it didn't you know it didn't really blow me away, but it was doing enough interesting stuff to make it uh, worth worth checking out if that interests you. Then there's SD Gundam World Sengoku Soketsuden, which is an SD Gundam series. There are SD Gundams, and they shoot each other, and they blow up. It's that. Notable for the fact that it's all set in a very Chinese-inspired world. Um, and Bandai Namco has said that the, this for this, this year of Gundam, they are focusing more on international product, products and projects. And this is clearly one of those. They are clearly trying to appeal to the, uh, the Chinese crowd, and I can understand why. Um, so again, it, it's, it's SD Gundam, uh, all CGI, um, and nicely made. Moving on to Stand My Hero's Piece of Truth. This is the Otome anime of the series. Um, uh, reasonably attractive female characters surrounded by hot guys is the basic idea, um, but it is about a sort of um, secret agent sort of a storyline. Uh, the young woman is trying to prove herself as a new agent um, amongst a group of guys, some of whom are fine with that and some of whom are, are not entirely convinced and she's going to have to, you know, stand up to these, uh, um, to, to this, you know, this discrimination, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I'll be honest, a lot of these things are excuses to have um, the attractive female character um, have close and personal conversations with hot guys, right? And to have them standing nearby and, and, and say uh, uh, slightly risque things. Um, so that's for you. That's, that's exactly what this is. Um, and, you know, it has its audience. And there's Stars Align. Um, this is a tennis, actually it's a soft tennis anime of the season. Uh, soft tennis is to tennis what a softball is to baseball. So basically same sport, but with softer balls. Um, it is, eh, it is um, one of the reasons for that, or one of the consequences of that, is that soft tennis is more popular with uh, female players um, for you know, a variety of reasons. And so this is about uh, two uh, young men, two, two boys, one of whom uh, is trying to save his tennis, tennis club and a young man who doesn't really want to do that, but apparently is, you know, has a lot of drive, and so he has the chance to take, you know, they're the worst in the league, and he has a chance to make it, you know, the, the best in the league because he is supernaturally talented. And then the post-credit scene happens. 
and what was a well-made and interestingly sort of calmly structured story um, takes a turn. And suddenly it's... <laughs> It's serious. Um, I did not expect this this show to go there. So, um, this might not be your typical sports anime, interestingly enough. Might be. But stick around to the post credit sequence and you might find something that uh, um, isn't certainly not what you expected. Also not what I expected, True Cooking Master Boy. This is an anime series uh, uh, set in China about a young man who uh, wants, to, he's actually already a really accomplished chef, he wants to be like the, the best chef you know ever in history, and travels around cooking. What's interesting about this is its visual style. The character designs look very like late 80s, early 90s, very like Fushigi Yugi, um, and like the animation style, and even just like the structure of the stories feels very much of that era. Um, you know, running around from place to place and kind of, um, swooping into different character stories and helping them out and then moving on from there. Really interesting. Um, um, a wonderful throwback kind of an anime series, um, but structured well enough that anyone can enjoy it. Right? It, it's not trying to parody or, or copy the way things were done back in the, uh, in the days. They were just saying, let's make a show that was like the good shows of that era. Right? Let's... let's um, let's not forget the lessons of back in the day. Finally, this season, I watched Welcome to Demon School Iruma-kun, one of the other screwball comedies of series of this season. Um, young man is, uh, eh, dies and ends up in hell, um, but fortunately, a, a demon basically adopts him as his grandson, an older demon, and then sends him off to demon school. Um, very over-the-top, screwball comedy kind of a series. Strange things happen to the character and he kind of has to deal with it. Uh, you know, just dealing with things thrown at you, literally, in many cases. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, again, I, I, I last several times watching the episode. Light entertainment, but very much knowing what it is and executing on that and giving you exactly what you're looking for in terms of just fun, light entertainment. So... Those are all of the anime uh, of this season that I watched. Again, just the ep first episodes, um, except in cases where I was able to catch episode two. And um, that was, that's, that's it. That's the season. Hope you found this useful. Hope you find some things that you enjoy. Thank you very much for watching.